Knights of VP stuff. I mean, first off, uh, scenario. So the scenario says, um, page. So I had a master CDP normally, in addition, exited. Okay, so it's just CDP as normal. And then if we look at the rule book, for CP. Yeah, I'm trying to find where I saw it. Uh, victory point value, total value, slides over B, altered during play, uh, infantry and DRC, each squad, the crew was worth two, each task squad was worth one, leader, blah. Uh, doesn't say for prisoners there, which is strange. So I'm looking at 26.23. Uh, 222 has capture. Uh, yeah, so, okay. So 22.23 exit victory conditions. Uh, some victory conditions are based on the exit of some VP, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. uh, the last sentence is captured enemy units slash equipment exited according to victory conditions count as normal VP during play and double exit VP at scenario end. Um so that sounds like I have to exit them, but I don't. There's nothing in the victory conditions for me exiting troops. Well, let's let's see here. Um, so capture right above it. Leader MMC is captured for victory condition purposes. Currently, if currently a soldier, uh, considered captured if the opponent is last recovered the weapon or captured the vehicle. Uh, Player receives CVP for an enemy unit equipment when it is captured. If it is no longer captured, these CVP are immediately lost. Uh, during the course of play, the captured units equipment are worth their normal VP value. As soon as the scenario has ended, captured units equipment are worth double their normal VP to their captor. Yeah, so that's my question is whether... Th th yeah, there yeah. seems to me to be a little bit of a... Conf a kind of conflict there because there are exit victory conditions but they're for you so i don't know so the the way that it's basically how it's saying is that um if you exit you get the current value uh doubled and you're not like it, it's still saying like uh captured enemy units exited according to the victory conditions count as normal vp during play and double exit vp so Essentially, it's just saying it's just re reiterating the same thing. So you can capture stuff um, in in this game specifically. Like you can capture them and not really have anything to worry about. Uh, and if we were, uh, if you were to have to uh, exit them, or if you wanted to exit them, you'd still get the the double and etc. Um, there's nothing that that really changes uh, in it. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to kind of make sure. Yep, no worries. Um, so uh, it is going to be your turn, and there's one thing that uh, I need to point out. Um, from the last time we played, uh, I was looking at some stuff afterwards, just kind of like decompressing and, and uh, stating some, some final uh, words there. Um, and I noticed that the stack that broke, um, they're disrupted. So... Uh, just FYI, they have all the the penalties that uh, being disrupted will uh, will give them. Oh, the E six this deck. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Um. Hmm. All right. Well, let's see. So it's like it's likely to be even more hosed than before, but. Uh yeah. Uh, unfortunately, no weather change. Um, I gotta see where my rallies are. There's my prisoners. There's my commissar. All right. I think I only have these guys and these guys to do. Okay. Okay. So. Um. Yeah. No self rallies as far as I can see from my end. So I will just start with these guys. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll start with the guys at the end. Nice. Uh. All right. That's a morale check, unfortunately, but, you know, there you go. Uh, so I think they actually... They're DM'd, but they I think they actually wrap. Oh, yeah, they should... Um, I'm 
unless I'm mistaken, that should be heat of battle. Well, I rolled a morale check, so. And the other guys rally as well. So, huzzah. More squads for the grinder. Um, Y10 is my other one. They do not rally. Yeah, I don't think so. No. They get a minus one for being in the building. Yeah, so, yeah, so... Uh, just step away, that, that squad that you did rally with this, with the two, it's uh, this process is reflected by a heat of battle DR, which follows any original morale check or rally, not self rally DR of two. So you have one squad that will. Oh, uh, good heat good heat oh, oh, fun. Well, unless you roll a twelve, which is more likely than you think sometimes somehow, but. So I am partisan. I believe I count as partisans. Yeah, so you were broken at the time of the roll, so plus one for broken, plus one for partisan, but that's it. So plus two. Okay. Yeah. Ooh. Of course. They <laughs> surrender. <laughs> well, they'll be able to. I think they just stay broken and they become... DM? I always forget. a different thing yeah uh, final heat of battle 3R12 cause the affected unit to become broken if not already and disrupted there's nobody to surrender to so they just stay there um, on my side of things I have a lot of rallies to attempt so I'll just do the this guy up here. So four rolls. Uh, I'm just looking for snake eyes, really. Uh, nope. Close on the one. Uh, I wouldn't have been able to anyways because of the plus one from the guy. Uh, now over here, leader first. Uh, no. And then nobody else can. So that's my rallies. Alright, I don't think anybody's got any broken equipment. No. no. Okay, fine. Grub fire. Sorry, just, uh, yeah. Can't worry, can't worry. Uh, okay, we will start with these guys who will fire group on the MMG. Okay. And that is going to be, uh, it's a, it's a five, no, five up three. Uh, is it Orchard's in BP5? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep, there it is. So, yeah, five up three. Nothing. Uh, Y6 will fire at BB4 as well. Why not? Uh, it's going to be a 3 of 4. 8 on 3 is nothing, I believe. Yeah, just missed uh, Alrighty. Um, do we have anything else to fire? Yeah, no fire. No more firing at this point. Okay. Movement. Leaves their CX. 
Four. Do heroes count as leaders for movement? Uh, no. No. Okay. No worries. Yes, I'm fairly certain they don't. Um, yeah, it's right. Uh, they're they're fine where they are. I'm not good. It's not going to break things for me. Okay. One. Mm -hmm. Two. When they get, yeah, I guess it doesn't really matter. Uh, when they get there, um, I'm just going to fire group with H8. Uh, so everybody's have firepower, so it's four and a half. Uh, it's down one for knob salt movements, up one for woods, and that's it. Leader directed. Nice. Thankfully, leader directed. Um, so is what I said four, uh, four and four and a half is a two MC. big question to now look up which I forget because disrupted is uh, you have to surrender immediately but I forget if uh... oh okay never mind I thought it was if they occupied an adjacent uh, it was immediate okay cool uh, and those guys are first fired Resid, though I doubt you'll bother going in there. Sorry, I dropped your knees there. One. Two. Okay. Three, we're in the woods. Mm -hmm. Four, we're in the woods. Um, I'll take one shot with a guy in G9 as a three flat. All right, getting good rolls today. Uh, normal run. All right. Uh, still one flat. One. Mm hmm Two. Yep. Three. Okay. One. Mm hmm Two. Okay. Three. Four. Uh, uh it's, yeah, it's snow, so the brush is one. Uh... Brush is, is it? two. It's two. All right. Yeah. Yeah, two. Um, I might still take a shot at that. Uh, that's not too bad. Maybe a plus two. Down one. Sure. I'll take a three up one shot. Seven. Aren't you at double range? Oh, I am. Yeah, never mind. All right. Sounds good. One. Mm -hmm. Two. Okay. Three. Okay, well, I absolutely have to shoot that guy. Um, I 
need to get the info counter out. Units, infantry. Sorry, gun. Um, machine gun's gonna take a shot. I'm gonna angle it uh, between AA5 and BB5 as a eight firepower down one. Uh, nine, I think, is a PTC on an eight. Uh, yeah. Pinned, I have no rate of fire, so it's first fire. And for resume. One. Mm -hmm. Two. Yep. Three. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. Four or five. Sounds good. One. Mm -hmm. Two, three. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to have to shoot with the conscripts. Um, six, that's a down one shot. So six on six, uh, one of two. Passes. Two is it? Assault move. And that'll get shot as well. Uh, so it's a three uh, flat. Oh. Uh, three and three, two and C. Well, still not causing casualties though. So. One. Uh, okay. Two. Uh, did you want to put residual on there? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Three, mm -hmm. four. All right, one firepower down one. Uh, that's just a PTC. Passes barely. You're good. Yeah, no, I'm just blood checking to see who else I got to move here. Two, three, and we'll stop. Okay. One, mm -hmm. two, yep, three, mm -hmm. four, mm -hmm. five, yep, six. Sounds good. One, two, sorry, three, mm -hmm. four, sounds good. Actually, I'm sorry, I'm going to go four, if that's right with you. Sure. Okay, uh, I think that's everybody. Everybody else is broken or has been broken. Defense fire. All right, defensive fire. Um, MG is going to try shooting again, except at the half squad. Uh, that will be four firepower. It doesn't break the gun, uh, and it's a flat seven. So PTZ. Damn it! Uh, success. Have no other shots. That's fire phase. All right. Um, because sure, why not? Uh, U four and V four will fire group. Yep. So it's going to be a four. What one? Two, uh, four, four, uh, four, four. I think pin, seven pin. four is a PTC. Okay. Let me just check. Uh, pin. Uh, 
let's see. Uh, AA5 will fire at BB4 because, sure, why not? Um, mm -hmm. They're uh, double, one and a half, half, half and half. Yeah, so one and a half up two. Yep. Uh, CC5 will fire as well. So they're going to be six up three. Uh, three up three. Oh, right. Sorry. Yes. Three up three. Uh, they don't cower, but seven on three, I think, is it nothing. Should be hashtag, hashtag. Yeah. Conditional. Uh, pass. Nice. Good one. Um, the leader and squad in FF4 will fire on the unit in the BB3. Okay. So it's one and a half up two. Uh, yep. Yeah. So nothing but the DM'd. Because I'm just feeling shirty. Similarly, the unit in C6 will fire at the, the stack in E6. Uh, I don't think they can see him because of the plateau. Oh, right, right. Yeah, no, you're right. All right, so squad in D8 will fire. Well, do I need to do that? Uh, sure, why not? We'll, we'll do it for giggles. Um, all the units over here will fire group on the stack in G9. Okay. Um, it's a bunch of having. So, uh, you know what? It's not even worth it. Yeah. Yeah, because I think I think it would be three up four. Yeah, so yeah, not worth it. Um, uh, let me roll to see if we get a. No, okay. Do you want me to roll for the hero stack? Uh, no, 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 because no, uh, there's wait. there's a there's a limit to like uh, I mean you didn't even have to roll for the the other group. Yeah, it's alright. Uh, you four low crawls. Oh, right, right face. Uh, that fires off. I mean, you could completely run away. You don't have to low crawl. Because the... I would have to go, like, up here. Uh... And I think I'm technically, like, well... Uh, you're uh, still... You're still in that suit. So there was this... I think I think someone was mentioning for the last video, um, you can go to T three and be fine because you'll still get. Uh, actually, I'm pinned, so it wouldn't matter. You can technically route to T zero and not have an issue. Yeah, the thing is, I don't want to route to T zero. <laughs> uh, then you still have to go to T three. Because um, so the the you have the, to low call toward the whatever cover. Yeah, you still have to go towards the um, your destination. Got it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. that's fine. Hopefully, I can rally that damn disrupted squad and get that leader hanging around, but we'll see. It won't matter. Oh, well. Uh, I think that's it for my routes. Sounds good. Um... Oh, no, no. I'm sorry. I got to route these guys. Okay. Well, do I? There's no good order next to me. It's more a matter of if, if you're worried about them getting shot at, is really the question. Uh, yeah, I think I can I route them back here? I think I can do that. Um, the only thing I'd be curious about is what their LOS is from uh, C6. Because if they can see uh, either BB4 or probably not a four. I imagine BB four might block that, um, but yeah, it's depending on their line of sight uh, from there. So Would they have so... to stop. I think they'd have to stop there, right? Because they can't see them currently. Yeah, yeah. it's blocked. It's blocked. So, so. Yeah. they can't even see it from B five. So, so they're gonna stop there when. Uh, yep. Yep. When they see. Yeah, I think they can probably see them, but yeah. Yeah, so they'll stop there. That's fine. Um, my guy in E three. 
uh, will go here. So he just rips through uh, the woods, which costs him a total of six. Uh, he's the only one over or DM'd. Uh, this stack will route to G5 via F5. They're disrupted. What does normal route mean? No normal routes. Uh, right. They might not actually be able to move. Like I think the leader it's, can. It's, but... So the leader can. There's not much of a point. Uh, and if they're disrupted, it's I think if they're in open ground, which they're not. So. So yeah, they'll just stay there. Uh, I'm just trying to see. Because I'm already on the disrupted thing. Um, let's move these people a bit. Oh, no. What the heck? Well, I had disrupted, and then I just flung you to somewhere else. Whatever, they'll just stay there. It's not so. Uh... Uh, okay, yeah, I think that's it for routing. Sounds good. everybody cc uh do you do melees first or cc's or doesn't matter it doesn't matter start over here sounds good no ambush, so, ambush. yeah no ambush um four on three so i'm still one to one uh yeah and i'm going against the half squad to stay one to one well you're three to one right no because i'm half fire fire right uh oh that's true yeah yeah okay so six uh nothing and over here it's also a one-to-one -one. for the melee yeah yeah okay. nothing and the other one will need a uh, ambush check you've got one guy that's cx uh, but you guys are stealthy, so it, it cancels itself out, and I got nothing. So, no ambush. Uh, you'll have a plus one for being CX. Yeah, and, and I've got a two to one and a plus one. Yeah, and I got a... I'll just do one to two, because no, I don't think those guys will survive regardless. So I'll do one to two versus the entire group, and I get a minus one. So that's a hit. Uh, yeah, that'll be a kill regardless. And, oh my god, okay. Well, everybody dies. Uh, yours is a two. I don't think that kills the MMG. I think that's it for CC. So, do you? All right. Um, what is the other thing? Can you not make things? Okay. Uh, all right. So, weather, no weather change, which I don't think would come up anyways, but um, rallies. We got a butt ton of rallies to do. We need to clear this all. So, that's not mine. 
Uh, I'm going to do the full stack here uh, to get the disappointment out of the way. I'm going to do the DM guy first. So nothing for them. And then I need, uh, well, I got a 4554. Five, five, so uh, there's a plus one, minus one. So the first guy rallies. Which is first and third rally. guy rally? Uh, yeah. First and third guys rally. Which is impressive for a six plus one. Uh, DM goes away, and I'll just toss this guy at the bottom. Uh, and then over here, this stack uh, leader does not rally, so nobody else can. Uh, and then they're auto DM'd, anyways. Uh, all right, I have a self rally here for the leader, which I think I get to do. Yeah, self rally, yeah, for the leader. But he does not, because the leader's uh, DM. No. Yeah, no. You get a plus minus. So, yeah. So the DM comes off there. That guy. DM comes off. Uh, yeah. You could technically keep it on since he's. Like, you're not forced to take it off. Uh, at least I don't. Yeah, yeah all that's all right. Right. I'll leave it there. Um, S7. Fails again. And Y10. Also fails. So yeah. All right, that's it. Sounds good. Um, prep fire phase. Uh, I do have those guys that can shoot. It's not really worth anything. Um, I'm gonna try. turns left six with this one yeah um i'm gonna try h8 to oops d6 uh as before so it, it is all half firepower so four and a half of one leader directed nope um g9 is gonna shoot a d8 as a six of one Uh, can I even do anything with this? Hmm. Really? Yeah, I really don't have any options, so... Uh, movement phase. Um, the half squad in B1 uh, is going to normal move into G1 or A1, whichever you're okay. uh, Into FF1 for two. Okay. It stops there. The uh, full squad of conscripts will assault move to B2. Uh, we'll fire at you. So sure. that's going to be a three up one. Yeah. Yeah. Six. Six on three. Might be a normal. Fantastic. check. Uh, pinned. And that is no residual, I think. Uh, three? No, you'd be, you'd be one. Um, I'm not gonna move anybody in there, so it's not really something to worry about. Worry. Um, one squad in H3 goes to H4 for one. Okay. Into the building in I5 for three. All right. Then the other squad follows. 
Sounds good. Sounds fair. Alrighty. Uh, D8 will fire at G9 with leader direction. Okay. Okay. So that's going to be a six flat. Mm -hmm. Just miss the PDC. PDC. Yeah. D6 is going to fire at. H8, returning the favor. So that is going to be a 4 of 1. Uh, yeah, four, uh, 4 flat. All right. Uh, so 2 on 4 is a K2. Yeah. Uh, so random selection. Uh, Bottom squad is a half squad now. Uh, and then two morale check for aid. Uh, leader passes. Second unit breaks. Uh, he's going to disrupt. Uh, other guy breaks. I think he also disrupts. I think he also your disrupts. LR is two, isn't it? Uh, yeah, then he disrupts. Uh, and the half squad pins. Of of all people. <laughs> that guy pins. Um, and sniper check. Oh my god. Good job! Woohoo! Is he actually gonna 6-6? Six, six? He goes way off into the distance. He can only go to T3. So T3 becomes uh, a half squad. Good job. Getting that value. You get does he get a DM for that or no? Uh yeah, they're auto DM. I'm sure someone in the comments will be like, well, snipers don't actually have squad stuff, but they can't break, and it's, it seems like the dumbest thing to get a sniper to go on a broken squad and then do nothing. Um uh... I think that's it. Yeah, I don't have any other shots. Uh, sounds good. Fans fire phase. I have none. Uh, route phase. Everybody here. I'll take these off. Um, all the disrupted guys have to surrender. So they go into uh, an ever increasing big pile. Just do this. Oh, I can't link multiple. I'm just gonna stick them all on the bottom squad. Yeah, I just. Oh, did you want to attach them or something? I'm sorry, I can yank them out of the stack if you need. No, no, no. It's it, it shouldn't be an issue. Uh, I should have it. There we go. Got those linked. Um, this leader on the other hand can route, so he'll go to G5. Um, these guys can't route, so they're stuck where they are, and that's it for my routes. Uh, these guys have to route now, so... They will route to U1. Can you do that? One, two... Uh, you, uh, you, uh, yes, I think I can, because T2, U2, U1. Yeah, and I, I'm just trying to look at the um, LOS-wise. I don't think you can see them. I think there's enough uh, in the way that it would block line of sight. Uh, no, they can see him at U2. Can they? Yep, there's five hindrances exactly. Oh, okay, so uh, from U3, can you see there? No, or wait, that was the wrong hex. U3, no, okay, yeah, no, you're good. 
because by the time they see him in U2, they can't see him elsewhere. So yeah, and then they're in. Yeah, they're out of sight there. So yeah, um, I think that's it for my routes. That sounds about right. Uh, advanced phase: the half squad in FF1 goes to FF2, uh, and I have nothing else to really do elsewhere. Not much sense moving those guys. Uh, yeah, I think that's I think that's it for that uh, CC phase. Uh, we'll do the melee over in V3. Uh, I no longer have the pin, so I'll just go against the 337 as a one to one. Uh, all right, I am also on the one to one. Oh, nice. Ten, so we ten. kill each other. Or no, I... Uh, I'm so Yeah. And then it dies. Uh, why has it switched? Whoops. Uh, the other melee, just to, to do that before I, I check the prisoners real quick. Is a one one both sides? No effect. No effect. That man is gonna last forever. Um, so that's eight. Fourteen. Uh, and that's it for the turn. Yeah, I'm just thinking. I'm trying to. I'm trying to look at the points and going like, okay, well, in in what world? Because essentially, if you if you did nothing, you'd win. Um, I'm just trying to think. Uh, what's my What's the points I can get? Like, I would have to rally everybody here. I think to have a chance. But uh, so I can get four points. Eight, sixteen. It's still, still technically in play, even if, even if I lose some of these guys. So I guess we'll we'll keep going for now. Okay. I just think that at some point it'll be more and more mathematical as to how. Uh, I want to. Is that weather change? No. Uh. No, 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 not a three. Also, I think I, I messed up the point value. That's not. Uh, 14 it's 28 because they're doubled uh okay um so no weather change uh rally um i will use my self rally on these guys because sure why not mm -hmm. so we'll start with them yep uh nope but they lose their dm yeah if they weren't dm yeah. that rally there does not. So. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Uh, he passes. Because you get a plus one for uh, the leader, and yeah. you're in a... Half squad. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, alright, he's good to go. Um, I think that's it for me. My rallies... Um... I'm going to do this self-rally here with the leader first. Nope, it was a nice number. Uh, do I have disruptance or one of these guys? I'll try my luck. Uh, B1, so I got three rallies there. Uh, B, nobody passes, unfortunately. Uh, and over here, I need some really low numbers, which I don't get. DM comes off, and that's it. Prep fire. Um, all right. Uh, stack in D eight is going to fire at G nine. Mm -hmm. Leader directed, so it's going to be six flat. 
Mm -hmm. Seven on six. Normal. Yeah. Uh, both pass. Oh, good for you. Sorry, I need to look something up here. Okay, no worries. Units in D6, the non, the the top two units, the hero and the top squad, will fire at H8. Okay. Um, so that is going to be a two and a half uh, flat, I think. Uh, yeah. So nothing. But. Uh, FF3 will fire at E1, um, so that's going to be a 3 up 2. Uh, yeah. So nothing. And that's it for my prep fire. Sounds good. Movement phase. Salt move into the melee there. Like, I don't think it matters when I'm within melee. Uh, for there, no. But I I don't think normally that'd be a legal move, but I can't shoot at them anyways, so we'll just treat it as it doesn't matter. Yeah, no worries. Uh, they'll, they'll come in during the advance phase. That's fine. No yeah, problem. yeah. Okay. Gonna move there. Okay. Three to there. Uh, I'll shoot with FFT. Uh, so two down one or two flat. Sorry. Any residual? Yeah. Right. yeah. Move there. Uh, same half squad will shoot as a one plat. Uh, missed. Alright. Otherwise, he's good. Will assault move there? Six or seven or eight movement up for leaders by themselves. Uh, six. So that's six for that half squad to there. Okay. And I think that's it for movement. Sounds that's good. Fire. Uh, conscripts in B2 will shoot at FF3. Is a three up one? Nope. Um, half squad, not going to do much. Uh, 
I'm still gonna chance it. Uh, G9 to D8 as a six of one. Eight, I think is a pin tash check. Eight on six, yeah. Is that a one pin? Yeah, one pin. All right, so I'll take it, I guess. Uh, and I got no other shots. I'm in star phase. Uh, FF3 and the squad in EE3 will combine to fire on FF2. Okay. So I think that's going to be a 3 of 1. Uh, 6 of 1. Damn. 4 on 6 is uh, TMC. 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 Jesus. Nice. Of all the times. I wish it wasn't on <laughs> squad conscripts that are about to get advanced on. <laughs> hey, you know, don't, don't knock it, right? <laughs> um, and let's see. Uh, D9 will fire at G9. Okay. Because, sure, why not? All right. It's one so and a half of one. I think that's it. Um, you have to get this pit fire to win. Oops. All right, routes. Uh, I don't think anybody has to route. I mean, I technically can route, and I will take the option, but I don't think you have any routes. Nope. Um, so, B1 uh, will route to D1. Uh, I could technically ignore that. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I can't get in there. Okay, no. So they'll go to D1. Um, these guys can't route because uh, it's disrupted. So advance race. Alrighty. Advancing to melee. Mm -hmm. Half squad advances into the building. Advancing to melee. Going down doesn't increase movement, right? No, only going up. Okay. Yeah, I think that's it. Sounds good. CC phase. Start over here. Yeah, I'm doing one to one versus your half squad. All right, well, four to one, yeah, combined. Mm -hmm. Yep. Super dead, super not dead. Yay! <laughs> and here, uh, we will jump on you, we're two to one. Uh, yeah, and I'll just do a one to one against whichever. Hey, he's super dead both sides. And here I've got a six to one. Uh, ambush first. Uh, All right. So you're stealthy. I got nothing. So nothing. Uh, and then yeah, six to one, and I'm at a one to four against somebody. So gotcha. Pretty sure, yeah. I think that's it. Uh, over to you. 
No, it's still turn five. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah, no, it's on and out there. <laughs> uh, no other change. Uh, he's at 44 points. Um, all right, let's try rallying. Eh, we'll go with the broken leader first. Good job. Um, go with guys in D1. Uh, none of them rally. One on their spades. Uh, down in H8, same thing. Two rallies to make. Uh, neither pass. Now, I think I have to call it at this point. I'm trying to think. I would I would have to essentially inflict a lot of casualties on you. But, like... There's, you, there's nothing you need to do, really. Because um, let's assume that uh, I can't rally anybody else. Like, these guys are kind of hosed because they're disrupted, so I can't move with them. Um... If I wanted to, to essentially run away, there's nothing that's preventing me from getting, uh, I think it's 11 points in this area. Um, Let's see, it's four for that, five for him. And then it's six, and then seven four. for the leader in the half. Uh, or another six. Or yeah, so it's 11 total. So it's 11 total. Uh, I can probably get this guy out, so 12. Um, so if I six these guys, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, advance. There's no way you're reaching there, no matter what you do. Um, and even then, like, you, yeah, I don't think you can get there. So it's not something I'd be worried about. Same thing here. I can CX, um, you know, go into the woods for two, three, bypass, four, five, six, advance. Or I probably have to stay in K10, but. Um, so it takes me two turns to get off board, whatever. Uh, same thing here, CX with the leader. I can get eight, so one, you know, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, I'd have to go into N9, so two turns there. Uh, leader is eight movement, so, you know, he can bypass here, gets, gets to the same spot as the other guys. And this guy, like, He's just so far north that I don't think anybody could catch him. Like as, as yeah, long as he, he can scarf her. <laughs> yeah, like you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then he wouldn't be able to advance, really. But I mean, you bypass this for one in the next turn, three, four, five, and then off board for six. So everybody here can essentially get off in two turns. Um, and I don't really think there's much in the way of like a response. Like, I don't think the line of sight anywhere really gives you the opportunity to shoot at any of those guys. So sure, I can get myself to 21, um, but you're already at 44, which is double that. Um, even if I wanted to get those guys, I capture those guys because I'm pretty sure those guys can make it to here. So they would have oh, yeah, yeah. Like, like, I'm just saying, like, in terms of me getting points, the only the only way for me to, like, turn this around would honestly be, like, somehow managing to get, like, you'd have to run at me and not shoot me at all and lose. I don't know. We'd have to have a lot of CCs like these where you're out large yeah like that. i i would i would essentially have to kill uh if if you add i'd have to spend three turns killing dude so these three turns um or maybe added an extra turn or whatever i'd have to spend three turns killing you um and like getting kills consistently but there's not really an, an opportunity for that to happen so i just don't think it's possible um other than like fighting it out until turn nine but again like 
you with you having the point advantage i have to go to you to get points and there's literally no reason for you to do that <laughs> you'd just be shooting yourself in the foot um so i, I think it's safe enough to call it uh, i think you could have won this one um even sooner if uh um because all my guys are conscript like all these melees that we had uh and i'm i'm sure it's more just because it's like kind of obscure and the close combat table is kind of i don't like it like the way it looks um because you could have done a captured attempt uh and because all my guys are, are inexperienced because they're conscripts you could have captured I don't know we'll say like two three more squads the only the only thing to to be careful about capture too is like as long as you have two units and you know i'm not doing something stupid like fighting one to four or one to six or whatever and somehow right rolling snake eyes i don't have anything to like you don't have anything to worry about because i wouldn't be able to kill both squads but i think this one is like especially punishing because of the fact that uh, everybody is is conscript i kind of wonder like um i wonder if maybe i should have just had like giant stacks like maybe like three stacks like uh like with the the six one i had earlier or way earlier and just like and just run just like no matter what you do like turn one and just get the hell out of dodge i mean yeah <laughs> Like the the downside is that you have to set up so close to the edge, and mm -hmm. if you do that, it's relatively straightforward. Like you're, I think you're gonna have to sacrifice somebody as a speed bump, you know? Yeah, which is the problem, and especially because like it's kind of the the difficulty when at the start of like, because I think it's between U and W. I think is the 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 uh, setup. And it's really just a, an issue of if I put the, the if I put my first line guys first, um, they'll survive quote unquote a little bit longer, and I have more movement out of them. But if you get into CC and I lose any of the first lines, everybody else just kind of like I I don't expect to live all that long uh, with other guys. Um, there was some unfortunate stuff like moving to B six and and having that open line of sight that I wasn't expecting was just really annoying and. You know, whatever so that's that's certainly on me i should have moved to to gg6 or gg5 whatever whichever one that is um and do stuff like that but you know i i find i find this scenario to just be like it's kind of a pain in the ass to play as, as the defender because you never have enough movement uh and it's just the the fact that snow as well isn't um it's not clear clear as to if it's ground snow, is it falling snow? Is it like which one is it? So, yeah, and that kind of screws with the road a little bit. You can't even get the road. You can't eke out that extra movement factor with the roads, you know. Yeah, and on top, and like, like for example, uh, if it's ground snow, like if it is ground snow and not just falling snow or whatever, then getting up one hex with any of my conscripts is literally their entire movement. <laughs> it's all three points. Yeah, so, you really kind of so, get shoved down here with those guys. Yeah, and and on top of that, like, uh, that was another issue with with um, it not being clear. Is had I known that, or had we decided beforehand, I guess is is more how I should put it. If it was uh, um, like ground snow or whatever, like I didn't think about uh, the water obstacles being frozen, so I didn't take them into account my movement. I was like, oh well, I can like over here or whatever i can split you up as i'm retreating you have to make a choice between up like north or south and you know if i cover the the bridge or whatever with a guy or two then you know i can put down residual or whatever but yeah i think this i think this scenario is just kind of one that's more and more more just punishing for the the game team yeah i mean i, I don't know i i went pretty well i'm not going to complain like there's some some dumb moves that i made i'm sure um but uh, overall i mean you know, i can't really complain too much because it was a it was a win you know so yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, i will say there needs to be some talk about prisoners because that just seems way whack out of balance um 
Like, that's why I won. <laughs> like, if it's just a flat-out fight, I, I don't win this. You, you will you manage to pull off, but because of the prisoner PvP, um, it just really throws a, a wrench in the works. I mean, yeah, that's two squads that aren't used up, but I think I still outnumber you something like 2-1 at this point. Yeah, and I think uh, going back to it, uh, I think I think that's kind of the, why like I I don't think it, the KMT should be an ELR one because your conscripts are already going to break, so like you should you could already expect them to become prisoners and whatever. Um, it just seems it just seems like you're you're adding punishment to the the other like the leaders and whatever because like if if my leader if my 6-1 elr is then he's disrupted too you can't get lower and like i don't have really good leaders to begin with so they they would all just become six plus ones and then you can't really rally anybody like it's just like that's why i have a 7-0 it's because one of them or i think it's this guy who who elr became a 7-0 like i just i have nothing to rally with so every every time someone breaks you're already losing them so I, yeah I and the terrain over on this map board is is punishing for rallies because your routing is like you know there's like basically you're gonna route here you're gonna route here or you're gonna route here yeah you know like everybody's gonna be funneled into just a few rally places and i mean it's better when you're over on this board but um by that point you know i, I don't know yeah i think i'd agree maybe more with this scenario if like maybe if there were, weren't all these orchards here like if if say like um y to aa3 for bb uh the bb uh hex row maybe if those were clear because then like because you already have the clear area here so you don't really have to worry about minuses too much um then you'd have a nice clear spot to that you could you know route through or, or at least like defend a little bit and then go back to orchard to for protection maybe there's I something there but I think it would be interesting if there was like a little a wall, like a little Ooh, wall. Man. Not not a huge it. one, but you know, like a few hexes maybe around the house, just to mm. kind of create like a little bit of a, a a strong point that's difficult to storm or that requires some effort to storm. You know. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, can see I don't it. know. You know, yeah, it's it, it could be interesting either way. So oh. I, I don't mind, but I think I, I'd like to pass on the other scenario. I know we're all set up for it already, but. Um, we'll save it for next week yeah if you don't mind i'm just uh, it's been a long long day sure sure um do you want to look at it before uh or do you want to go into it blind no nah, we'll, we'll go into it blind uh, okay like, i'm it, like you're you got kind of hosed on this one because of having to, to run away <laughs> i'm gonna get hosed <laughs> on the next one so yeah i'm looking at this one and i'm like god how do you like i don't know who designed these like i i know who did because they put their name on them but like man i don't i don't get it <laughs> like the, the fact that they had to include the harakiri rule for that one leader yeah i, I mean I, I i think i think if anything that i i really appreciate but you can kind of tell like the difference between these two scenarios where it's like i have to run I can get CVP, and you can get CVP, and there's prisoners and whatever. And then, like in the next one, it's like, oh, as long as you get five EP, EVP off, and it's like that's two squads and a leader. <laughs> that's it. Um, yeah, but the trick is, <laughs> you know, you get I mean, to see where I am, and I can't be concealed. As far as I can tell, there's basically no place in there I can, you know, depending on where you set up, obviously. But I'm pretty sure there's almost no way I could end up concealed. Well, so, uh, and I think this is something that we we sometimes uh forget or or omit um but you should be able to gain concealment uh, at the start um as long as like you're in concealment terrain and, and some other stuff uh let's check concealment real quick um uh, i guess uh, my my concern is not necessarily I, i'm sure i could gain concealment in it and I'm, i don't doubt that i will but the issue is that that 10-0 is an instant game over. Like, if you eliminate him, I lose, no matter what else is going on. And so there's uh, no... no it, what? No, no, it's, it's the, the... I only win if I capture him. I only win immediately. 
I, I guess what I'm saying is, but I have no way to conceal where he is. Oh, so, oh okay. I mean, yeah. So, yeah. so there's that. He's kind of the win point. Like, yes, you have to defend against the others, but he is the real like you know he's the 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 um, sudden death guy, and there's no way right. to really conceal him. You know, I can't play shell games with. You know, does this stack of three have the leader in it? Or yeah, because because then you're because you're also just shooting your uh, yourself in the foot in terms of, like movement. Um, yeah, and I think that that's it's you know what I mean. Like it, it's that sort of weird aspect of like you can you you've got these scenarios that are like oh yeah you just just uh, like okay if I had to. If I had to design the scenario we're playing right now, right, with the, the prisoners and the, the EVP and all that stuff, I think this scenario would be a lot more fun uh, or interesting if perhaps the Red Chinese had to get their points via prisoners only, and if the KMT only got points for exiting. Or maybe, or maybe uh, like, they had to get some CVP, but also some EVP. So you had to commit some units to, to shooting the, the Red Chinese, but you had to commit some units to leave. And if you shorten the, the, this mission, uh, this scenario, by two turns minimum, you can get a nice balance between you have to get guys going or else you won't, you, you won't exit them, uh, and you have to have some guys stay behind. Um, and even if you're doing like a, a slow retreat like I was or, or whatever, you still have that, those opportunities. Um, meanwhile, the prisoner is like, all my guys are, are conscript. And like I was saying, if, if you do a capture attempt versus a conscript squad, um, you, you're getting uh, a negative modifier to your CC rolls. Like, we both rolled really well today on CCs, uh, at least for the, the majority of it. Um, so, obviously, there's there's maybe some, some differences there in, in how it would have applied. But... Uh, nonetheless, like if you're if you're if you're capturing the the units via via um, via CC or because the ELR is one, you don't you shouldn't have to rely on, on CVP. I guess is what I'm trying to say, because you just have so many points. And I don't know, maybe not do two to one or something. There, there's there's something to be said there, but um, yeah, no, no, I, I see where you're going with that. Yeah, I know. I mean, I think that's something that I, I think we can agree on on all these scenarios. Like, if we, if you wanted to, if you wanted to make them a little more balanced or a little more interesting in terms of, you know, just gameplay per se, um, there's a lot of things you can do with with these scenarios. Like, the situations are kind of interesting, but just that the way that they've chosen to implement them is sometimes lacking. Um, and it's very obvious this whole scenario pack is coming down very hard on the we're going to recreate the historical situation as best we can. Yeah. And, you know, everything else be damned. And just, like, very punishing one side or the other. <laughs> it's not really, like... It, it seems like when... It's like, um... I, I forget where they read where I read this before, and I forget if I mentioned it on a, on a way earlier stream, but, like, uh, I think one of the the main pieces of history that was used for this scenario pack was a book that i i, I forget the the name and author at the moment but the origins of the book are basically like steeped in um like a, an american or somebody who is who who i think was a communist himself who is following uh or allegedly following mao and so like it, it's very it's it might have been steeped in a lot of bias. I don't know. I haven't read the book, um, and I only put that out there just to, to, you know, make potential note of it. But it's one of those things where you know, it's like I wonder how much some of these, like, what these actions actually were. And I kind of wish there was more like primary sources to verify it. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, it's always interesting. Um, I mean. Yeah. Well, in any oh, case, in any case yep. we should be uh, good to go for next week. Um, so next week, LM10 for those left behind. So that one would probably also be a quick one. Uh, I was going to say, I don't think that's going to take us more than next week. Yeah, no, that'll definitely not be a, a two-parter. Um, How many turns are in that, just out of curiosity? Do you have it open? 
eight. It's another huge one. Why? I know, right? Like, it's it's crazy. I think you know what I find so weird too. Why is it that we've had scenarios before where, um, and, and I guess it's in the balance, but I don't get why. Why is it that this is a, a, a scenario where the Red Army sets up and moves first? Like, wouldn't this be the perfect scenario to auto make it so that, like, you set up second? So the KMT at least has to, like, like is forced to spread their units to in, like, a more wide pattern? Just make the EVP, you know, requirements a little bit higher. I don't know. It's, it's strange. But we'll we'll see it next week and complain about it then. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's telling that the first balance for the Reds is... Yes, that, yes. I think that's what makes it worse, too, is that, like, nobody plays these scenarios, so you don't know what the balance should be. So it's like, uh, you know, do we do it or not? And, kind of it, it's hard to determine which is unfortunate well we'll see how it goes next week i it's gonna be an interesting uh thing <laughs> sounds good all right man have a good week yeah you too all right well uh sorry wardrobe plays world War two uh it's a, a short night for you uh it just caught us at the tail end uh of all our shenanigans uh, unfortunately, it was a red Chinese win. Mathematically, I was eliminated. There's no way for me to, to, to... I would have to rally essentially everybody here in these two stacks. These guys being disrupted is is not impossible, but um, if they get if they get DM'd, I can't run away with them, so they're kind of hosed because, uh, you know, my opponent can just constantly DM them. Um, these guys, I'd have to rally them and then run three turns. It'd take them two or three turns to get off board. Again, uh, unlikely and and doesn't really get me to a point where I'm uh, I'm equal or uh, able to survive that. Um, uh, what else did I want to say? Uh, I was hoping to get through LM10 at least started. Uh, I will do at least a preview of that just so that if anybody is curious as to what it looks like, um, you'll get to see. Uh, oh, I should save the game. Um, you guys will at least get to see what it's supposed to look like. Uh, we'll skip this and this. Game and red Chinese. And I'm not going to do like that. Um, yeah, morale five, four five because I had some con some half squads. They're all conscripts. Uh, the scenario had an ELR 1 for the KMT, so anytime you break, uh, if it's over, you know, it's if it's by more than one that you broke, you're automatically disrupted. So uh, everybody just turns into prisoners, which is a lot of points for the Red Chinese. It's hard to, to overcome, essentially. Um, this scenario, as you can see, it's already claustrophobic, and the Red Chinese have to set up within four hexes of Q7, which does not give them a lot of options. Um, I don't even know like what would be a good option. I think I see one right away, uh, as cheesy as it is. And I don't really get these scenarios the more and more we play them. Um, for example, uh, if, if, so the red Chinese player has to get uh, EVP um, and they have to do it by exiting off the east, south, or west sides. And you can kind of see how immediately it could be cheesed. So for example, if you had like three stacks with your leaders in P4, X5, and R4, you could, uh, if you CX, you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine for road bonus, and then advance two turns, you can get off board. It it's uh, well i know I, I i reference the rules a lot so uh, there's some stuff that i still get wrong um at uh, uh i have to admit um and and i'm trying to get better at it which is kind of why i like doing these videos uh and, and playing through um especially doing all the the new scenarios and, and some some of the crazier things um anyways this scenario seems very strange the the chinese the red chinese lose immediately if the 10-0 leader gets captured so 
uh, I don't know. I, uh, it's it. This will probably be a very short scenario. Um, on Friday, I have or we have. I gotta save game. Don't need it. Um, Friday is gonna have this as a, a scenario. Um, it's called Our Place in the Sun. It's one of the first scenarios uh, that is actually actually uh, recent, not in overall design. Um, but this comes from Hollow Legions 3, uh, which is itself a reprint, or this scenario specifically is a reprint from um, Soldiers of the Negus, uh, which is supposed to be the Italians versus uh, Ethiopians slash Eritreans. Um, we're essentially finally in uh, sand country. Um, so we're going to see a lot more beige and, and yellows. Uh, there's a lot of caves. So, uh, for example, there's a few, few caves here. Um, this isn't actually my final setup. So uh, hopefully nobody spills, spills the beans to Gary. Uh, but essentially, there's going to be um, a lot of people hiding. And the Italians and or uh, Eritreans, I think, are coming from this area. And they have to capture... Uh, a bunch of hell hexes. Also, there's another one that I'm forgetting. I think it's this one. Yeah. So, anyways, there's a bunch of hexes that the the um, the opposing player has to grab for some VP. Uh, it's the caves are something that's gonna be the first time I play with, so there's gonna be some hopefully not too many issues. Um, but yeah, so. Uh, moving moving to, to more and more recent stuff uh, and should be pretty uh, should be pretty cool um, <laughs> I mean you could uh, uh, you know I think I think I got some ill um, I received some some um, what's the word I'm looking for uh, some bad blood with some people because of my opinions on uh, I will load up actually where's the save file is it this one yeah, so this is how the night started. So you kind of got an idea as to how the how things played out. Um, so uh, here's a, a, an example of some sleazy play that I hope uh, some people will will see and understand why I think it's bad. So uh, let's put these two stacks here, and these guys don't exist. Um, so uh, here's a, a very brief touch on skulking and why skulking sucks so um it's the kmt side's turn and they don't want to get shot at so in in a turn in asl is supposed to take be like two minutes or something whatever um so in the movement phase uh, i don't shoot because it's my prep right so we'll, we'll just uh try, 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 try. there so uh, I don't have any rallies because we're just going to assume that the box of the game is this, right? Or here, whatever. Um, I don't want to shoot because that would let me get shot. So I don't, I don't declare any shots. Movement phase. I go, wow. I really, I need to defend e5. That's a victory hex. Well, I don't want to get shot at, but I have to defend it. So I'm going to move to f4 as an assault move. Well, c6 can't shoot at them. Why? Because the forest obviously blocks it. Okay, so then nothing happens in the defensive fire phase. Nothing happens in the advanced fire phase because these guys can't shoot back. Route phase, there's nothing. And then you just advance back. And that's called skulking. Skulking sucks. Anybody who uses skulking, tournament play or not, I, I have a dislike for you. The, you're, it's not fun. You're removing the ability for the attacking player to do anything. Um... Some people have said, like, well, it doesn't have to be, uh, like, real life. Okay, but it has to be fun. Uh, and, and skulking ruins that. Um, and someone complained that uh, apparently IIFT makes the game imbalanced for the attacker, which doesn't make sense because uh, both sides get the IIFT. It's, it doesn't benefit one person. Um, whereas if you're the attacker, you don't like you could still skulk with these guys in your own turn but there's not much of a point if you have to grab e5 for example um anyways skulking sucks uh 
don't do skulking if you're learning to play this game uh, if you're learning to play this game actually there is a uh, starter kit discord channel which I don't know if I have linked on my twitch page so um, I'll have to double check that but uh, it's very good uh, Stu who is a, um, uh, a prominent YouTube ASLer uh, I think he runs it uh, they do a lot of weekly games or whatever um, they should change their timings because it's the same time as my twitch streams but uh, uh, shenanigans aside um, it's a great way to learn the game for anybody out there who, uh, who wants to dip their toes in um, so so uh, for for anybody who can't see chat uh, skulking I always just assume that it's a clunky way to demonstrate them hunkering down you're forfeiting things when you do it but anyway I get it the problem is, is that you're not forfeiting anything because it's in it's your movement phase so the attacker has no opportunity to get there um, another example would be like if you're an ff2 and you want to shoot it at b1 i don't want to get shot at so i'll just take my my stack and go to c1 some people will, or c2 whatever it doesn't matter really in this uh, in this instance someone someone might might say well if you had someone in cc1 you could block it for to shoot it whatever but the problem is is that like it, it, we're talking about um, obviously this is all hypothetical but like it also depends on what the range of your units are for example all the units here max range was three um, you have uh, if 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 you move back here and you stay there you gain concealment if you go back you don't if you already have concealment you're not you're, you don't forfeit anything by skulking is is the problem I have um, with with people who argue uh, th that skulking is fine um, the fact that you're in the woods or that you're in the building you're already hunkering down um, I don't know I just find that the as a defender uh, you should be willing to uh, to have to stay where you are in order to secure whatever location uh, you, that you're in um, yeah, every I actually uh, I'm very mean in that I force people that I play against to use the IIFT. Um, I say that a little tongue in cheek because uh, I'm technically fine with the IIFT, uh, but I find that especially in a pack like this, every every unit here is one and three. Um, obviously, one is on the firepower chart chart, so uh, for I the regular infantry fire table. Um, but the incremental just does have a three firepower. Um, there's not much in the IIFT that really changes anything. Um, the the real benefit, if anything, is conditional cast checks. So basically, um, if I was to shoot, uh, if I was to shoot this guy at, at BB five and I get a conditional cast check. It just means they take a pin task check where maybe potentially they wouldn't normally have um, there's a few other numbers that change these are usually just you know uh, k2 to k3 a 2mc to a 3mc uh, etc it's never any like huge change but the the reason why i use iift is because you get values out of certain units um, for example the MMG here in BB4, we'll say that through the magic of everything, um, you you have it on a 337 squad. You don't go down to 6. You get the full value at 7 firepower. Does that change much? I mean, it changes the result of a 5. It's still pretty normal. Like, it's, it's closer to average than you might think. And you get an extra task check. Uh, at nine in, uh, where you wouldn't normally get it it's those small changes that make it valuable to use the mmg with the full squad rather than saying well i'll give it to the half squad because I, I can't go higher than six and maybe i'd rather have four instead um uh so it's not it's not that i don't allow people to skulk but i do kind of make a, a huff about it um it's obviously everybody can play ASL how they want. Um, there is 
There are people who house rule stuff. There are people who don't. Um, the IIFT is an optional thing, so it's not even a house rule so much as it's a choice. Um, so, so that's an argument that some people will use that uh, that the scenarios are designed with Skulky in mind. But frankly speaking, I don't see how. Like. The idea is that somehow you have a scenario where, like, what, every turn you skulk? Or is there something else? Because, like, skulking is, is, a, is a way to essentially nullify um, the attacker attacking at all for an entire player turn. And, like, how, how is that supposed to work? Like... There are so many permutations of, of scenarios. Um, there's so many different maps. There's so many different uh, setup sets you can do. Um, whether it's it's with regards to your OOB, whether it's regards to uh, the locations you can set up units. I, I don't know how people argue that that uh, scenarios are tested with skulking in mind. Um, the the only the only way that you could have a scenario that's tested with skulking in mind, quote unquote, it would be um, FT146 uh, Bridge of Life, which we played last week uh, on Friday. Um, and obviously, if you're watching this on YouTube, then it'll it should be up before, but I don't know exactly when. Um, but Bridge of Life is is a scenario that has literally like there's three hexes you have to cross. There's no way around it, and you don't have the range to attack the defenders um and some people said well just assault move in advance but that's four hexes you have to cross so it's two turns that you're you're out in the open getting shot at for free and and you can't attack the enemy because they're just gonna skulk so um you could argue that that scenarios some like a scenario like that could potentially have been tested with skulking but again, like, how do you fix skulking? And in in my opinion, the way to fix skulking is to not allow it. Um, if that means that you have to get rid of, uh, you know, if, if someone thinks that sleaze freeze from VBM shouldn't exist, hey, it's your game, and if you disagree with it, uh, then then house rule it for with whoever you're playing against. Um, I think there's enough opportunities, there's enough options for, for something like VBM, uh, Sleaze Freeze, however they want to call it, that it doesn't affect the game. In the sense that, like, if there's a vehicle that parks itself next to BB4, I have to take a TASH check to not get pinned. But if I if I pass the, the, the TASH check, then they're, they're essentially um, in the open for me to to uh, street fight and... and um, you suffer the vulnerabilities of being in close combat. So at least there's a risk there. When it comes to skulking, there's literally no risk to the defender. Um, in, in Like in this instance, again, with if, if you go from E5 to F4, there's nothing that prevents... That, like you don't lose anything. You're, the attacker can't shoot at you. Uh, there's, there's nothing. But if there's a vehicle that, that pops into E5 and stops there or whatever... And forces VBM freeze. At least you can attack. There's there's something there. The the attacker has to uh, the attacker quote unquote in in this circumstance has to sacrifice or potentially sacrifice a vehicle for what can often be a, a minor gain. Um, I mean, sure, I don't disagree that, that maybe there should be something that allows you to, to gain an extra plus one or something. Um, but again, the, the entirety of it, like you're already getting plus ones um, from defensive terrain. I think there's already enough to, to make it hard for people to get morale checks. And, and there's enough to, uh, there's enough hurdles for the attacker already. And I find that giving more bon uh, bonuses or benefits to the defender just seems like you'd be messing with too much. Whereas skulking is the one thing that you can remove and doesn't change how uh, how it would affect your play. If the defender does not want to defend e5, 
then they can they can uh, assault move to f4 and if they stayed there and didn't advance back into the hex uh, that's not skulking to me that's that's them being like i don't want to defend e5 or i'm going to wait until you move in so that i can shoot you or you know do something there um but i find skulking the idea of of leaving a hex to to then re-enter it is um it's beyond parody as to what you should or should not be able to do uh, in this scenario um you know like if i had skulked here for example oh okay you're telling me that an mmg is like a, a crew with an mmg is literally just gonna like march out of a building and sit there for for two minutes and then walk back in just you know there's there's historic accuracy there's fun and then there's skulking that i find ruined both so um well so that's the thing too though is like tactics do play into your narrative and, and do play into your story unfolding whether it's you know going for the human wave or uh, a unit that suddenly goes berserk because of a quote-unquote bad move um you know there that exists right uh yeah i do allow uh, vbm sleeves freeze or at least like i'm fine with it um because again like uh we talked about this in um oh, what's near chapai chalk block i think it was part one could have been part two but um i'm fine with it because the idea is that again you're putting a tank adjacent to one of my units so i have the opportunity to do something you're not removing my ability to fight um or to to react to the movement um and on top of that like it makes sense that if a tank is right in front of you like it sucks that it prevents you from shooting out um but it does also make sense that a tank that's right in front of you you wouldn't want to reveal your position for example um or you wouldn't want to to expose yourself to getting shot by said tank it makes more sense um it makes more sense than i left my building i looked at a stopwatch counted to 30 and then went back in you know uh again through with no uh with no vulnerability to to the defender in in this circumstance um so yeah and and to be fair to to um not to not to skulking itself but the the scenarios that we've played um i try not to be too harsh on them uh there's some that are there's some that are terrible uh there's some that that need tweaks and could be better for it for example this scenario i think would be a lot more fun if the red chinese weren't counting cvp uh and if the kmt required both cvp and evp in different values separately instead of being a combined thing um because it's too easy for the red chinese to get prisoners uh and so you load up on points really really quickly and uh in this instance like my my opponent wasn't even going for capture attempts which are, are easier because all my guys are conscripts so um there's 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 ways to tweak some of these missions some of these scenarios uh but a lot of the scenarios that we've played are decades old um and you either don't have the uh they haven't been exposed you know in the wild or whatever you want to call it um for for uh, a very long time and you have people that just have never heard of these scenarios never played them uh and and you know they could have been very insular uh they only exist for you know uh, a club in manitoba or whatever and nobody else outside the outside has has touched them save you know a half dozen people um who bought them out of out of curiosity rather than anything else so uh yeah like some of the scenarios can just be changed a little bit and they'd probably be a lot better or maybe not a lot better i shouldn't say that but maybe more fun um and and yeah that's that's about it i you know um I think I think the two half squads, uh, a group that I honestly should probably just like bug and try to get a, an icon from them to to put up here as a as a replacement every so often for um, 
uh, Battle School stuff. Uh, I think they had mentioned in a really early episode about how a lot of clubs play differently because it's based off of how your club plays. Um, a good example is if you have a club that exists in, in God knows where, but they've never skulked, like if nobody even knows that skulking, quote unquote, like that that action is a thing, then they would never play with it, right? You have to be exposed to other people who use those tactics in order to, to know that they exist in a lot of cases. So, um, or like for example, like I've never played caves, uh, which you know we'll we'll be touching on on Friday. Um, I have to go look up articles written by people, you know, 30 years ago because uh, I had never played caves in, in my local groups. Like it's just not a thing. Um, you know, PTO can be can be very confusing, and and uh, you know, depending on what you even scenarios you even play in PTO, you might not ever come across caves. So, um, so yeah. Anyways, all to say, there's a lot of crazy stuff in ASL. Uh, play ASL how you want to, but um, in my opinion, skulking shouldn't exist in the game. Uh, and that's like one of the only things that it would ever change about the game. There's some rewrites and rules that can happen for sure, but skulking is not something that you can that you can write in the rules. You, how do you how do you say to somebody, uh, you can assault move out of a hex, but you can't then advance back into the same hex that you were previously located at. In Vassal, that's easy to do because I can keep track of that stuff. But if you're on a board with even you know the this number of counters or double that you're not going to remember uh, necessarily who was in which hex at the start does that count for leaders what if you move a leader out and another squad goes into the hex that they were just in can the leader go back because you'd like to put the, the positive on them you know there's there's so many variables that just uh, it's just easier to make it like a, a an understood relation between the two players who are playing to say hey build skull please it just it ruins it um but yeah and thanks thanks for being around and, and asking questions uh honestly i really appreciate um anybody who takes the time to to uh listen to us to to watch along um i hope that that these videos spark interest uh, not only in the history behind the scenarios like the actual history of it uh, rather than you know the crazy whatever crazy results we get um, and and also just more um, more eyes on the publishers because uh, groups like LFT groups like uh, heat of battle back when they used to make stuff I guess uh, you know they, they have decent products they have people who put a lot of time and effort into making these scenarios and um, it just kind of sucks when uh, these scenarios can essentially like go by the wayside for decades and uh, everybody just plays you know retaking Veerville SK1 or whatever it is so um, glad you uh, enjoyed it um, for everybody else who's catching this after the fact I hope you all enjoyed it as well thank you for stopping by and I will uh, hopefully see you next time